I want you to take a moment. Ask yourself, do I really understand what it means when I cast my ballot for the 2020 election in November? Because my purpose today is to persuade you to support abolishing the U.S. Electoral College. What I want to do is to show you some of the inherent flaws of the current system. After I show you that, we're going to talk about exactly what is causing these problems to persist. And finally, we're going to go over a proposed solution, which is, of course, abolishing the U.S. Electoral College. Now, with a roadmap in place, let's move on to the problem. That is the faithless elector, as well as the verbiage itself of the U.S. Electoral College. The faithless elector is something that does not guarantee the fact that a chosen elector will vote in line with its state's wishes. Take example, the 2016 election, when chosen elector Michael Baca was told by the state of Colorado that he was to vote for Hillary Clinton. Instead, Mr. Baca decided to vote for John Kasich. He was removed from his position, his vote discounted, and he was replaced with somebody else. Later, Mr. Baca decided to bring suit against the Colorado State Department, claiming that his removal, an inherent replacement, was in fact unconstitutional. He actually won that case. Another problem is the actual verbiage of the U.S. Electoral College. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution goes over exactly how the U.S. Electoral College is supposed to work in terms of voting, as well as any contingencies that they might need in case of a tie or discrepancy, but does not actually say anywhere in this verbiage that an elector must choose the candidate chosen by the majority of their state. Now that we've gone over the problem, let's look over what causes this problem to persist. Firstly, the U.S. Electoral College was ratified in 1788. That's 232 years ago. It was done so in a time when the government did not trust its own people, and rightfully so to some degree, to make an informed decision, an educated decision on who was supposed to lead them. However, at the time, it was a time of horse-drawn carriages and mail delivered by pony. Information as such was not readily available compared to now. Looking at just this presidential election in 2020, the case of Michael Bloomberg, who using his own wealth took out ad space in the media so that we would see his campaign videos. Something that the Founding Fathers never would have dreamed of. What also causes this problem to persist is while there has been an amendment written, the 12th Amendment, that separates the presidency from the vice presidency in terms of voting, there's nothing within that amendment that states once again that an elector must choose the candidate chosen by the majority of their people. During the election process of Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr was also in contention for the presidency. And due to some discrepancies, it became very confused on who would actually become the president-elect, using the outlines written by the Constitution of the Founding Fathers. It was decided that Thomas Jefferson would be the president and Aaron Burr would be his vice president. Now, moving on from our problem and what persists to the solution, which is, of course, abolishing the U.S. Electoral College. What should be in its place is a system that provides a voice to the people of the United States of America instead of relying on the promises of electors saying, of course, I'll do exactly as you ask. Because again, nothing is guaranteed. A system should also be implemented that has a candidate going to every single state if possible, and not just key states that are going to help them gain the most electoral votes. In the 2016 election, Donald J. Trump beat Hillary Clinton in the U.S. Electoral College. He won with 304 electoral votes. 
Miss Clinton had 277. However, if you look at the popular vote mechanics, Miss Clinton beat Mr. Trump by over 3 million votes. 3 million. Let that sink in for a moment. Now let's go over what we've heard today. We've gone over the problem, which is that of the faithless elector. There is no guarantee that an elector will choose when they are voting the candidate as willed by the people of their state. We also went over the fact that the Constitution has this written in in 1788. And there's nothing in that verbiage that guarantees a vote. We also went over what causes us to persist, which is once again the date and time in which that this was ratified over 232 years ago. A time of horse-drawn carriages, wagons, when our country was still fledgling and finding itself, when we were just becoming the United States. We were discovering what it meant to be independent. We also looked at the fact that while there has been an amendment, the 12th Amendment to be exact, that denotes the differences between the vice presidency nomination and the presidency nomination, there's once again nothing written in that is going to guarantee the will of the people. And lastly, we looked at a system, a proposed system, that could give a voice to the people, that would make every candidate go to each state and say, what do I need for your vote? Versus going to key states that give them the most power in the Electoral College. In conclusion, this is the year 2020. This is not the year 1788. We no longer have to worry about not getting information when we need it. We live in a time where information is available at our fingertips. It is available to us 24-7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Vetted or not, that information is always at our fingertips and it's most likely in our pocket. My friends, we don't need a system that is obsolete. We don't need a system that was created over 200 years ago. Modern times require a modern system of electing leadership. Thank you.